here is the worst case scenario that can happen when we connect something to from from outdoor some track that some track that some track yeah uh, from super collider from our door to super collider and then we send it back to a new track and we want to record that thing yeah the worst case scenario is actually the one i have for example what i have is um a usb audio device this uh scarlet solo focus right from focus right which is a usb device yeah and it said that uh those usb compliant uh, devices uh, are the most okay factual thing uh, they are um, on Linux they use the driver that USB compliant audio driver that can change its um, internal buffer yeah like buffer software buffer uh, to an arbitrary value and that will result in an arbitrary latency yeah uh, so every time you plug it off and and on it might change it might change that's what is what, what, what people say about it yeah some engineers who develop hardware for example more than that <clears throat> what they say is uh, when you have x run uh is uh, a situation in which uh jack t is unable to comply with real-time requirements yeah, and then some uh, dropouts will occur. You will hear discontinuity, some crackle, and so on. Then latency can change on the fly. Uh, I don't know if I uh, experienced something like that, but okay, I, I, I saw the situations where like latency just differs. Yeah, the my actual the the, the experience that I encountered the most is during one session one session like when i opened the door for example launched jack t opened the door if there there is a certain latency i will have it here definitely uh it will keep up it, it will be stable until i restart the application yeah and even if i restart the application restart jack d it might be the same but in certain cases it might be different yeah that's uh, also a thing i've seen i've seen now even more than that, in my case, you can see in my Ardor interface here, I have this ambiguous word, which means it's input-output latency. Is that my factual uh, graph of connections, which looks something like this, a bit messed up probably, yeah? <clears throat> is so that Ardor now doesn't quite know. There are certain rules that you have to follow. Mm, uh, in particular, the, the system doesn't like when you have one to many connections. Uh, many to one is okay, but one to many. But okay, I want one to many. Well, well, what's what's that? It will work, but it will tell me that well, mm, I don't quite know how to align stuff because uh, well, I don't know. Now I think it's probably some design flaw or something. But I never looked at the source code, so I I don't know that's how I use it so the worst case <laughs> I, I cannot be sure about the automatic alignment at all now can I have a sample accurate alignment can I do that well by hand obviously yes I can how let me show you so I have this track I have this track with this loop yeah example one And uh, mm, it's connected to Super Collider. It has a send. Yeah, here's the send. Goes to Super Collider. Super Collider has like 16 inputs in my case. Okay, that's how I configured it. <laughs> now, from Super Collider, I get a signal to this bus. No, let's start with track. Let's start with track to this track. First, this track. So, this track receives from Super Colliders um uh, out one and two yeah also i have lots of outputs yeah but okay one and two it goes here uh and uh, the algorithm that super collider runs is no this is not it uh okay this one this one you can see it uh by the bigger text font <laughs> 
Um, I, I know I, I forget about that a lot. So people uh, reminded me about that. My bad. I, I forget about that from time to time. Uh, okay. So what I do here, you can see just a well Schroeder reverberator, typical one that I use over and over uh, uh, during these uh, media based production series. Yeah. So sound comes in here and comes out. I will talk about this just a minute, in just a minute. So if if we want to listen to it, then uh, I have to press this monitor input button on the channel. And now we hear that uh, uh, modulated phasey uh, combi reverberator. Okay. <clears throat> Let's record that thing. Let's record that thing. I will arm this track to record, uh, recording process to start, and also punch in, punch out. Yeah, we can see those um, punch in, punch out markers. Yeah, let's record that thing. Uh, yeah, sorry, my bad. I, I used to that shortcut, but now I <laughs> pressed it manually. Okay. Let's take a look at the alignment. Now you can see we have some uh, latency, yeah, here. Uh, what is the latency? Okay, it's something around one thousand thirty-six. Yeah. Uh, let's go a bit closer and see. It starts somewhere here. Well, it's something around one thousand twenty-two, which is actually a, a buffer size. Uh, that I specified for Jack D, yeah. Uh, or, or what is that? Period per frames, yeah. Uh, let, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the factual values. Uh, okay. Uh, actual values are no, not this one. This one. So what I have is yeah, buffer size. That's how it's said here, but in options it has a bit different name. Okay, buffer size, one thousand. 24 frames. That's it. That's what I have. So I guess it's equal to that. But here's the problem. My uh, algorithm, my algorithm here, actually has a delay time. Uh, they, based on the topology of all pass, it might let the direct uh, signal through, and then it will start well accurately. Yeah, but it might also not let it. The, the the first output will come after the first uh, delay time delay line length yeah and it's variable delay line length so everything is a bit uh, might be a, a bit unpredictable yeah yes in this case it's actually the one if I'm not mistaken yeah, it's the one that lets the signal uh, through that the, the input signal goes right way to, to the output but what if what if it's not like that? I don't know, for example, what is the algorithm? How can I make sure that I'm sample, uh, I have a sample accurate alignment? So the answer is here. You can see when I get the, dry si uh, the, the signal input, I copy it to this dry variable, and then I output that dry signal as well. Yeah? And since these are here, there will be uh, two channel arrays, yeah? two element arrays. This will have two channels, and this will have two channels. I then uh, put them into array and flatten that array so that I will end up with the one array of four elements. Yeah, that's what. Uh, um, and def once if I don't do it, it will do it automatically and, and, and write about about it in this post window. But you can see now I have output proxy one two three four. Okay then, so I've done it so that I will record it to another track. Usually that's what I have in my projects, like two tracks to record. They are always connected to Super Collider, and I just put some material that, that that will be. I connect something, and it will come here always. I will record that, and then put them to their dedicated tracks or whatever. Why like this? Because this is faster. I don't need to connect everything all the time. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now that I did this, let's record those both tracks. Both tracks. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay let's go and now let's take a look you see yeah everything is almost accurate 
but with this dry signal we now can make a null test and see if we've done everything correctly so what I usually will do is just measure things first uh, it says 1021 but I, let's I, I assume that it's probably equal to my buffer size so I put here in the nudge window 1024 uh, 24 S samples well it's already in samples but to make sure and to let you know then I will activate this group so that everything in my group is selected once I hit one of the regions and nudge it back yeah now I can uh, just make a null test the uh, the phase is already inverted because uh, well uh, I already tested it yeah and this is how it should be usually uh, because well why do it all the time yeah and let's listen beautiful null test yeah beautiful null test we don't hear anything mixer shows nothing yeah and then the signal ends and we have it and like my case is usually that if I've done it if I've done it um, mm, I don't need to do this for all the subsequent takes I will just use this nudge value and after recording I will just nudge it back yeah uh, you might say like okay but what is the un unpredictability you have a buffer of this certain size you can just nudge it back your si uh, your buffer size and that's it yeah but thing is it's not always like that but when it's like that I like it it's very predictable yeah and actually I don't even need to measure anything uh, the one thing that might affect this behavior let's take a look at that thing uh, 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 is this H, H, select both context menu alignment and you can see it. align with capture time that's what I would prefer to use all the all, always all the time but by default if I'm not mistaken it can be this one it will align with existing material now let's try to record with this on uh, okay like this yeah now we can clearly see that this is the thing called misalignment yeah now it's <laughs> earlier than the original sound and more than that if I'm not mistaken it's no no everything is okay but it's just it's just misaligned if I would start the recording from here this would be just cut this part of the signal would be just inaccessible so uh, I would always, in these cases, when it says ambiguous and USB device is the one I have, I would just use this. I would just do that and align by hand. Usually it's just one notch procedure and that's it. Okay, that's a solution to, a solution to part of the problems that might happen. Now what if, uh, what if, what if? I have let's say 15 minutes of material or 20 or, or I don't know 40 minutes of material and I want for some reason to process it uh, with super collider because there are some fancy algorithms that I've done and I like them more than anything else and so on uh, usually uh, uh, no not usually okay without any additional words what we can do is uh, jack the has a uh, non real time calculation capabilities it's called free will mode and that's what ardor by default utilizes for renders yeah you specify the bus usually it's master master bus and the ardor will just render that bus it's not only bus that that that, that is possible to render you can do everything but let's foc focus on bus so uh ardor a uh, uh, super collider super collider can actually be utilized as one, uh, one of the elements of jack d patch bay that will obey that free will mode uh, we of course will not be able to use any of the um, sc lang functionalities in this context yeah 
it's just SC synth, which um, already running. Yeah, it's meant that it runs. It has some synthesis node uh, tree. Yeah, certain well DSP uh, algorithms that run in there, and it's listening to some input from Jack clients from Arthur in this case, and then if free will starts. Jack the uh, super collider will return the values as soon uh, uh, as it has to. Yeah, it will not. Uh, th there will be no need for some additional ex instructions. Yeah, super collider is just a client of Jack D, and well, it works. It works. So we actually can do this. We can have a track, send it to super collider, get it back to a certain bus, and render that bus in non real time, faster than real time, and we get the result. Yeah. Uh, is my uh, 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 window with me uh, not allowing to view something important? Uh, uh, okay, let it be like this for a while. What if? I don't know. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. Uh, it's usually I usually use it like this with super collider. Yeah, but with Ardor, well, I actually don't allow something to to be seen. Yeah, probably it's better without it. <clears throat> okay, so I have it connected here, same way as it was connected to this track. Yeah, it's connected here. We can hear that. Let's now disable this, this, and this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so now, um, let's run this dialog for rendering. We have to choose channels. It can be a ma master bus, by the way. Yeah, but uh, it will be cleaner if you have a dedicated record bus. You, you can see also I have them in one group, so I can like move them faster, move them out of the way, or, or make them um, invisible. You can do it with with, uh, with the mixers, this sidebar. You can see show group. I have only one group here. If I will press it, it will they, they will disappear. And here in this list, we will see that they are well, here. Okay. Here we will see that they are invisible. You can activate the activate tracks here, as well as make them invisible. Um, so let's export channels. This uh, rec four bus is selected. It's the one that connected to super collider. Uh, time span. Let it be this loop. Usually I use loop for, loop markers for that. And uh, file format is self-explanatory. Yeah, as it is, goes as it is. And what else, what else? Nothing, nothing. Uh, the default is usually the directory of the project. It will have an export folder, and th that is the address where new files will go after render. And you can automatically generate names for your files. Yeah, so let's export. OK, you probably heard some. Uh, uh, some some funky sounds during this because I use the actual uh, Jack D session, which uh, well records this video. Yeah, so it turned to this free will mode, calculated everything faster than real time. I didn't hear all, all of that. Yeah, but I know that in video the, the sounds will appear. Um, and now let's check if everything is correct. So it, here's the file manager already with that folder opened. And I have it. You can see, like, I did some tests. So there are lots of renders. And um, it's sorted by modified dates. So new files will also always appear on top. That's how I usually use it. The time is 1747. Yeah, just right now. So let's put it here and take a look. Yeah faster than real time. So of course, well, for this type of small chunk, there is no big, big use of it. Yeah. <clears throat> but let's assume it would be like, a, I don't know, like a speech, a 30 minute speech, and you want to do something with super collider, you can do it faster than real time. That's it. The beautiful, fe beautiful feature. Yeah. Uh, let's disable this for now. Uh, what? Uh, 
dry and the recorded sound yeah do we have a delay here yeah we also will have a delay also will have this problem but uh, it also will be uh, same not the same factually same uh, value of delay time but it will be well I would say as stable as the one uh, that that will same procedure as with uh, previous but the value is a bit bigger I don't quite know yet by which factor but it's if what I've in encountered the same value usually during the session it's same value but a bit bigger than the value of real time uh, recording so that's it that's what I wanted to talk about uh, it's very cool I think that with Super Collider we can also do things faster than real time uh, uh, by utilizing this Jack T's functionality it would be even better if we can do something like uh, like this so if I have if I have on this oh, come on please okay if I have on this track some effects here some effects for example this reverb yeah come on please uh -huh. let's listen you can hear the reverberation same type, type of cheap Schroeder style A reverberator uh, I can do something like this select this region and press this button button which will run uh, a Lua script bounce and replace regions other has a Lua interface for writing extensions so you can write your own script take some time to uh, 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 to to learn uh, which uh, functionality is available what you can actually automate but this is very like situation yeah it takes effects that are on the track and uh, we can just press this this uh, button and there you go this uh, 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 region is replaced with the one that now has processing on it yeah in just a matter of a second yeah I guess same can be done for external connections I will probably at some certain point and point take a look at it if I would have so much work like mixing for other people uh, and would want to use super collider for that uh, I would definitely write, run one but usually I use it on production so I don't quite care a lot but this is a cool feature so I wanted to share that so that's it uh, I guess I told about everything I wanted so alignment real time compensation non real time yeah you can also do same things uh, with the uh, uh, non real time processing you can render several tracks at once yeah like you would do with stamps when you want to to uh, uh, render stamps and so on you can connect dry output from the super collider dry output from super collider this this dry thing what is this uh, okay this dry thing uh, here for example and re render two files yeah and then just align them accordingly they both will start we know the starting point yeah it's a, it's a starting point of the marker yeah it's a market position so we just put it there and calculate how much uh, delay we have uh, so that it that's it that that is it it is that uh, in the next video I, I want to talk a little about mixing with Ardor I will touch on some very common things no, will not go deep just what I used to mix the last material that I was like working on while showing how all the system works I decided if you remember on a previous video that I should um, finish it because the machine is unable to do video processing and uh, <laughs> audio at the same time it's enough for it so okay I did some puzzle work and uh, uh, mix that thing so I will talk a little about mixing in Ardo this will be about Ardo uh, one and let's see what comes next so till next time